It's Jack Friedlander as executive vice president for the college. But it was a period of a, a very exciting time. You know, Dr. McDougall was um, the president at the time, fairly new. It's it just a, um, a feeling of excitement at the college that it was going to become something very special. Um, and the foundation at the time was a very sleepy organization, just raised a little bit of money for scholarships. It was paled in itself. It was a very different time. It was prior to email, if you can believe it. And so the, um, when you went to the cafeteria, um, you know, faculty and students socialized. You saw students there. And we didn't have afternoon classes. It was a morning college and an evening college. So it was more time for people to visit and do things. And correspondence was done through um, you know, typewriting and you know, that kind of correspondence. And computers were in its infancy. And so they are just trying to figure out how to do work. Um, so there's a lot more um, um, you know, verbal contact, personal contacts you know, at the time. But it was, um, it was just a period where um, um, we're hiring a lot of new faculty at the time, new staff, and just um, a sense of excitement in the air. Um, even though some of these big experiments you know, fell through, you know, we learned from that experience. So it was a very different campus at the time um, than it is now. Well, the major players at the time, you know, um, Dr. McDougall, of course, is the uh, college president, and he was very charismatic and, um, you know, knew everybody's name on campus and just made everybody feel very important. Plus, he developed um, important you know, relationships with the community and just really building a tremendous degree of support, uh, you know, for the college. Plus, he, he was very visionary in his, in his thinking. On the faculty side, you had Pablo Buckaloo. Pablo was a faculty member who helped start um, our study abroad program. Um, he wrote the initial proposal for what is now EOPS and DSPS programs. He, working with Robert Elmore and myself, developed what was back then called matriculation, which has now evolved into Student Assessed Support Program. Um, and that's when we, you know, all the students got you know, assessed, you know, placed, counseled um, in, you know, into courses. So the college became a leader um, in the state um, in, in matriculation. You know, Bob Kassir was um, a leader for the faculty. It was back then, it was pre um, um, IA associate faculty members. Um, um, was meet and confer. It wasn't a formal union. And Bob Kassir was very um, strong. You know, John Kay, Barbara Lindemann were very strong with the academic senate. You know, in the faculty. Um, you know, at that time, um, Tom Gary was very instrumental in um, you know strengthening the academic senate. And when the faculty voted at the time to form an independent union, which they now call the Faculty Association, Tom Gary, Tom, um, Gary Carroll, and others were very instrumental in um, developing a really good um, set of understandings that differentiated the role of the um, um, union, which is independent, and the academic senate. And that set the stage you know, um, well for the college you know, you know, going forward. Um, with it. Um, Jim Minow was a very um, instrumental person. Jim Minow was brought in to take the foundation to a whole different level, from just a small raising scholarships to you know, raising you know, very large sums of money, many of which the colleges are benefiting from today from um, you know, gifts that have come to fruition, um, you know, um, you know, state planning and stuff like that. So it took the foundation from a very small um, organization to actually, um, at times, number one in the country. Um, and certainly in California in terms of the amount of money um, that it raised. So those are some of the major um, players um, you know, during that time period. So I started as a dean for social sciences, um, you know, fine arts, um, you know, study abroad and scheduling different areas. But during my time, I became a dean for almost every area of the college. Then I became a vice president of academic affairs. And then Dr. McDougall asked if um, I'd be willing to um, um, become executive vice president and integrate um, student services and academic affairs and form a new unit. So that became, um, um, so became the executive vice president for educational programs. So I had the opportunity to form a brand new unit. And Dr. Gaskin, when she was a president, asked me to take on um, non-credit adult education on top of that. So expanded, so I had um, the job of three vice presidents um, 
all under um, the Executive Vice President of Educational Programs, and that model still exists at the college. Then one year, um, when the board um, parted ways with Dr. Sirban, you know, former college president, um, I was asked to become the acting president for a year, you know, which I did. And then two years ago, Dr. Gaskin asked me if I would help her, and she created a new role for me as executive vice president for the college, where I have overall college responsibilities, um, which I did in my last two years um, at the college. So I did everything from a dean um, to acting president um, to forming um, two new positions at the college um, you know, while I was there. No, each one um, I liked for different reasons. Um, of course, being executive vice president for educational programs was probably my favorite because um, I got to shape a lot of the programs that exist today. So I probably liked that role the, the best. Uh, the biggest change was um, a lot of big changes. One was email. Um, it's hard to believe a time when we didn't have email. But when I first came to the college, you know, we had typewriters. We wrote memos, and, um, and then email just changed, you know, the communication dynamic, you know, of the college. The college became much busier as we doubled in size. We offered, you know, morning, afternoon, and evening schedules. Um, um, it changed social patterns on campus. Um, you know, faculty and staff used to have more time to interact with each other. Now it's um, much less so. Um, um, the advent of um, computer technology, where so much is done. Um, um, you know, with technology, where in the past it was done with, um, you know, you know, you made phone calls or you just visited with people. Um, um, so it's less socializing on campus, but more communication as a result of email. Um, um, offering so many courses online meant, you know, a lot of the students um, who we serve, we never see, were, weren't on campus as much, and faculty weren't on this campus as much because they're, you know, they could be doing this at home, where in some cases, you know, other states, you know, you know, doing it. Um, the um, um, college, um, you know, um, grew in size in terms of the number of faculty and staff. Um, student services um, um, became much larger as the state you know, funded it and the role became much more important um, in terms of um, um, providing services for students, you know, and what they expected. And so those are some of the major, um, you know, changes um, that have taken place in the college. Also, the college has many more committees now than it used to have, um, um, and um, it's much more, um, um, you know, rules-based and bureaucratic than it was when I first started. When I first started. You know, in terms of um, <clears throat> what has a lasting um, impact, one was the development of the West Campus. You know, um, again, Dr. McDougall was very smart in terms of um, understood how the state politics work, state finance. So we got funds to build each of the buildings here, you know, on the West Campus. And so that changed the dynamic of the college because now rather than everything central, being centralized on the East Campus, we became a full two-campus college and it allowed us to um, actually double our enrollment. You know, remember when I first joined, it was under nine, you know, 10,000. Yeah, at our height, we were close to 21,000, you know, students. The um, another significant event was um, we started a dual enrollment program with the high schools, and we expanded that where students can take courses um, for free when they're high school, college, you get college credit and high school graduation credit, and that helped the college grow its enrollments um, in a very cost-effective way, and we became a leader in the state, if not the nation, um, in that program you know, in, um, you know, working with our high schools and establishing great relationships, you know, you know, with our high schools, um, you know, during um, that period. Um, another um, major significant event was the growth of our foundation. Um, was um, the college, you know, getting a disproportionate number of state and national awards for its innovation. And a number of years ago, the Aspen Institute named it, you know, the um, one-year top 10 community colleges in the nation, only one from California. And the following year, were the co-winners of the Aspen Award. And just last year, we were college was named number one in the country by College Choice. But that reflected um, the sense of innovation at the college and um, and um, in spirit of um, um, just trying things and, um, and doing it. 
Ninja major event was the passage of Measure V, which is a bond measure, which paid for you know, major renovations of facilities. And that was a significant event um, you know, in there. Um, a major event was the um, formation of a faculty um, you know, independent association, um, which is now the Instructors Association. Um, and that was significant. And a couple years later, a major event was the um, American Federation of Teachers um, tried to represent the faculty taking away from the independent union. It was very um, divisive. Um, they lost by a small m m margin. But that served to pull the faculty members all together in a very strong and strengthened the institution because they realized how good you know, we have it um, and enjoyed the independence. So that was a very significant um, event um, at the college. Um, um, so those are some of the you know, major things. Um, also, uh, probably the most major event that really turned things around was the advent of email um, and the um, offering of afternoon you know, courses. So now we became a morning, afternoon, and evening college. Um, email changed the whole nature of correspondence. And um, teaching courses online, um, where we have you know, um, you know, about 30, 40 percent of our students taking courses online. That also changed the relationship of faculty um, and how much they're on campus, um, where faculty members are teaching a lot of their courses, not having to be here. So that changed faculty dynamics. Well, the, the major change was when I first came here, um, the only building on the West Campus was drama and music. Um, and now we have um, you know, all these buildings on the West Campus that we didn't have before, um, including a new one that's being you know, built. Um, We've gotten rid of a lot of the temporary buildings that you know used to house you know, offices and classrooms, and many more will go with the new building. Um, we you know renovated the um, you know science buildings on the east campus, and um, the drama and music building, which is the old, you know oldest building on the west campus, went through a, a major remodel, as did the humanities you know building on campus, and we hope at some time um, you'll have a major remodel of the campus center, you know which um, you know. Is scheduled next, you know, take place. So physically, um, um, but what's inside the buildings is the buildings are all um, um, have you know technology in them. They all have um, um, a flat screen technology and computers. You have many more computer labs which you didn't have when I first started. Um, and um, and faculty members used to teach with um, overhead projectors, and now you know it's all with computer screens and interactive you know technologies. Um, so those are the major changes um, from a physical um, you know, point of view. But the landscaping's always been beautiful at the college, and um, the ocean is still there, and the, and the you know, beautiful views. So that's always been a hallmark you know, of the college. Um, I feel good about the, um, you know, reviving and expanding the dual enrollment program. You know, hundreds of you know, th thousands, thousands of students have benefited from that. And as I said, um, the college benefited you know, financially from that program and became a model for the state and the nation on that. I feel good about um, working with Antioch College, coming up with a three point plus one program, where Antioch will accept three years of college, city college credit, and students will be able to finish a degree at Antioch um, just taking one year. Um, and that's become a model program for them. Um, and other schools have since um, replicated, but thousands of students um, especially working adults that benefit from that. Um, I was involved when CSU Channel Islands um, came into fruition, and I insisted when I was part of the advisory committee to help form, form that university that they offered programs in Santa Barbara. So now we offer bachelor's degrees and master's degrees on our campus in the community for um, our students, um, and I got it at the state rate, um, so they pay the same tuition. So I feel really good about that. I established a program with Arizona State University, you know, hundreds of students take advantage of, where students go to University of Arizona, Arizona um, State University and pay in-state tuition. So they don't pay, they pay less than they would pay to go to UC um, to go to, you know, and get a fine education. And we developed articulation agreements, um, you know, with them. Um, I feel good about the um, Express Success Program. Um, you know, it's won national awards and state awards. Um, and it helps students get through their um, basic skills half the time and you know there's about 1500 students every year to participate in that program and still going strong you know i brought in over 40 million dollars of grants to the program you know sponsored a lot of innovation there and um 
when I look around campus, um, many of the programs we have now, many of which won state and federal national awards, you know, I was instrumental in helping um, to begin and, and, and nurture. Um, um, and when I was acting president, you know, helped turn the college around from, um, um, you know, a feeling of despair to um, um, when the, we did an opinion poll, you know, we rebuilt community support you know, for the institution you know, in that role. Um, so, and I feel good about creating the position of executive vice president on um, educational programs and an organizational structure. I created the uh, Center for Lifelong Learning, um, you know, which thousands of, you know, members of the community have benefited from. Um, and so anyway, I can go on and on, but um, I feel very good about it. Um, but the most important thing was hiring, you know, good faculty and staff and managers. And, um, you know, being named by the Aspen Institute twice as um, a primary person that was responsible for the college um, number one status in the country. So I feel very good about um, my contributions at the college. Save a lot of money, it's great, yeah. And also, um, it's encouraging some students who in the past may not have gone to college. It builds their confidence in doing it. But also time is um, the enemy in terms of um, college. So the less time it takes them to complete, the more likely they will complete. What the research shows is the students who took the dual enrollment courses um, 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 have higher graduation rates and transfer rates than those who um, um, you know, could have but didn't take advantage of it. You know, another program I feel really proud about was um, you know, I had the initial idea for what's now the Running Star program. Um, you know, through ELPS, and that's helped, you know, students who in, in the past would not have gotten to college, you know, get a good start, um, you know, on that. Um, so I worked with the donor to help shape a program that eventually became, you know, the running start and transitions and other programs, you know, like that. So yes, I feel good about the thousands of students have benefited from programs that I had um, a role in, to, in, in, in creating. Well, I think, um, um, you yeah, know, somebody who um, um, contributed a great deal to what um, one of our former faculty members called the golden year of City College. Um, and it was you know, a good 20, 25 years of just um, um, of excellence and just being um, accepted and recognized state and nationally as um, a leader um, in California community college movement. Somebody who was very um, um, supportive of innovation, um, who um, you know, got things done and um, who um, had great relationships with uh, faculty, with managers and staff, um, and was very student-oriented. And, um, and I feel good that a lot of the programs I you know, had a role in starting, um, and faculty and staff I brought here, um, are still thriving after all these years. And so I feel good about um, you know, what I've um, contributed to college you know, and um, what's still in place after all those years. So I feel good about my contributions you know, that I made while I was here. Provides college for the 100, top 100 percent of the students, so we serve you know top honor students as well as students who um, um, couldn't have got into another college or university. It's a college second chance. You know some students don't do well, you know, at university or in high school or here. It gives them a second and third chance to succeed. It's a place where um, um, adults can you know continue to retrain. Um, to stay up, especially with all the changes taking place in, in the job market and technology, where you know you're going to need to um, constantly be retrained, you know, throughout your life. That's the college that provides that. It's a college that provides um, lifelong um, learning for members of the community, especially your retirees, um, you know, seniors. Um, it's a lifeline. It's a social network. It's social support, as well as um, you know, constant learning as people live to you know, to be longer, um, you know, live longer. Um, and so it plays a very special role in serving um, all elements, segments of the adult population um, in, in um, Santa Barbara. It's very important in terms of provides um, workforce, um, um, you, know, um, you know, people for the, uh, you know, the business community, you know, who's going to, um, you know, many of the jobs we train for that the universities don't um, you know, in doing that. So the community is very dependent upon the college um, in doing that. So the college provides um, a very unique niche. It's transfer. Um, it's an opportunity, first, first, second chance, third chance. Um, it provides um, opportunities for working adults who need a course or two just to keep you know, current. Um, it 
provides training for nurses, firefighters, you know, and, um, you know, different professions. Um, it provides, um, as I mentioned before, that opportunity for just for lifelong learning. It's just really important because one of the major reasons why people take, um, older people take courses, is just for that social contact, so they're not isolated. And that's an important role to the mental health and social health and fabric of this institution. And the college is so well integrated um, into the community in terms of its community partnerships, relationship with the museums, the art, art the nonprofits, that um, we work hand in hand with them. So the college um, is a major pillar of strength um, you know, for the institution. Plus, it brings in a lot of money into the community um, through its foreign students, you know, out-of-state students, tuition funds, um, and um, provides employers um, with a workforce that, um, if it wasn't for the money that they get from financial aid, you know, parent support, they couldn't afford to work these jobs that employers are dependent upon, um, you know, in the service industry um, in particular. So, it's um, the college will continue to play a critical role, um, you know, in the community. I, the people, um, you know, I just you know love working with the faculty, um, the managers and staff and students um, at the college. I enjoyed being in an environment that um, um, was very supportive. You know, the relationships among the groups were generally excellent, but it prized um, and rewarded innovation. So um, it's a place where you can, um, you know, try ideas, you know, talk about ideas of bright people, um, and, um, and get things done. Um, uh, fairly easily. Um, there's funding usually available to make things happen and support things. So it's just a very exciting, um, supportive um, environment to be in. But what made the college, you know, it's always made the college such a special place, was um, the quality of people that we had. Also, what made the college very special was um, unlike other community colleges that primarily service their local population, what's made City College so special is a large proportion of our students, especially our younger students, um, aren't from Santa Barbara. They're from different parts of the state, the country, and the world. So students here got the best of a university experience in a commuter-based institution uh, because of the diversity of, um, of students they met, which made it a very unusual um, community college. Um, and because of the college's reputation and location, we're able to attract the best faculty and managers um, and um, so it just made it a very um, unusual place, an exciting place, um, and special place in which to work. Well, for the college, um, I hope that it, um, um, continues to, um, um, rethinks its role, um, in serving students, um, not only from Santa Barbara, but outside Santa Barbara. That's what made the college a very special place. Um, so students can go to school with, and learn from students from other col uh, cultures, other parts of the state, the nation. I think the college um, needs to rethink um, turning you know, away from that um, you know, going forward. I um, hope the college will be able to um, um, you know, grow its enrollments again um, in a way that makes sense you know, um, um, for the right reasons so it can uh, you know, rebuild the faculty positions and staff positions, um, it's lost and maintain it's the right size to have you know, good vitality. Hope the college um, continues to be, um, maintains innovation um, because um, it requires an extra effort. Um, to do that, it means extra work. And, um, and I hope the college doesn't lose a sense of community as more and more faculty members commute for longer distances because of the cost of living here. Um, they teach more of their courses online you lose that sense of community um, that's really important, that makes um, the college a very special place um, um, for both students and for people to work um, so they'll spend more time here as opposed to not being here um, you know, in, 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 in doing it. The college will need to reposition itself um, um, because changes taking place in society are so rapid that the college um, will have to stay we're more than just serving um, 18 to 20 year olds. It needs to figure out how it's going to serve the working adult, um, whether working full one or two jobs and still getting the training and retraining they need, um, how to deliver that in a way that makes sense, and how to stay viable um, when there's more competition um, for more providers um, for these audiences that we uh, provide, both traditional students and non-traditional students alike. 
So college, college uh, has always had challenges, but hopefully to rise, you know, it continues to figure out innovative ways um, um, to stay ahead of the game um, and remain, you know, the top community college in, in the state, if not in the nation. So those are my hopes for the college.